Welcome back to the Adult Bible Study, where we are going through the Explore the Bible uh, Adult Bible Study from LifePoint material. Today, we're going to be continuing our series in Romans, where we're going to be in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And what we're going to do is we're going to start in on the first section titled Dead to Sin in Romans 6, 1 through 7. So, uh, Kevin, could you read verses 1 and 2 for me? Yeah, here we go. So, Romans chapter... Uh, 6 verses 1 and 2. What should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? So Charles, question here. Why is Paul making such a big deal about continuing to live uh, uh, continuing to live in sin? You know, we, we've all sinned. We realize that we've fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus has gloriously paid the price for our sins. So what's the big deal about sin? Yeah, well, that is a fantastic question. And that's one, actually, the reason that he is, is asking these questions is because he's responding to the questions that are being raised to him. Because uh, in verse mm -hmm. 20 of chapter 5, sure. he talks about um, grace abounding where sin multiplied grace multiplies all the more ever more and so what's happening is people are coming to paul saying well if grace multiplies more when we sin well shouldn't we sin more so that grace can multiply even more and That's... and paul responds by saying mm, yeah. absolutely not and why should we not sin so that grace may abound all the more well, it's because by his rhetorical question in verse, uh, in verse 2, he says, how can we who died to sin still live in it? This is going to be answered later on, specifically in verses 3 and 4, but the reason is because we have died to sin. If, we're, if we've died to sin, we can't live in sin because that would be living a double life. That's true. Because Jesus paid that price. And so we're going to find that out in verses 3 and 4. So let's go ahead and read that so that we can learn a little bit more of what Paul's argument is. Verse 3 says, Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore, we were buried with Him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. And so, mm -hmm. Kevin, here's, here's the question that I have from you from those verses. What does it mean to be baptized into the death of Christ? That's a, that's a good question. When we think about baptism, obviously as Christians and as Baptists, mm -hmm. we, we associate uh, what we do, uh, becoming a member of a church and things like that. But, you know, baptism, it means a lot more than that. Baptism actually refers to what is happening on the inside of us coming out. And what Paul is making a really good illustration here is the fact that if we trust Christ, we're trusting in uh, His death. We're trusting in the fact that He died in our place. So when we're baptized physically, well, what we're saying is that uh, our baptism represents uh, what Christ has done on our behalf. Um, when you ask the question, uh, what does it mean to be baptized into the death of Jesus? It means that that Jesus is the one who has uh, set us free from sin. We're identifying with Christ. Yeah, and that, that's, so good. That's, that's what we're talking about with baptism. That's good. All right, so we're going to continue to press on looking at 5 through 7 now. Uh, follow along with me as I read 5 through 7. For if we have been united with Him in the likeness of His death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of His resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with Him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is freed from sin, so Charles, how does uh, how does being united with Christ in a death like His render sin powerless? This is a, a fantastic question. 
Um, and the reason that it renders it powerless is because Jesus died to sin. Because we have died with Christ, and we're, that's been symbolized by our baptism. So baptism symbolizes the death that we've died alongside of Christ, that we might be raised to newness of life. So Jesus died to sin once and for all through His resurrection. So the way that it makes sin powerless is because death reigned in the fact that Jesus had to die for sins. But grace and the power of sin was ultimately nullified by the fact that Jesus has raised from the dead. The fact that He is no longer dead but alive, seated at the right hand of, the, at, at the right hand of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, mm -hmm. renders sin powerless and renders it powerless in our lives because we identify, as Kevin was just saying, with the death of Christ, realizing that sin is now dead in Christ, but also dead in our lives because of Christ, because we will be raised to newness of life with Jesus, ultimately in the resurrection of, of the saints and the resurrection of all people. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we're not going to sin. That's right? right. But it does mean that we don't have to sin. That, that's this, right. That, that sin doesn't have that natural power over us. I think that's, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So let's continue on. We're going to continue on to the next section entitled Alive in Christ. We're going to be looking at verses 8 through 11. Specifically, though, we are going to look at verses 8 and 9. Um, and so let's go ahead and read verses 8 and 9. Uh, follow along with us in your Bible. And verse 8 says, Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him, because we know that Christ is having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. Mm. So Kevin, what makes Jesus' death and resurrection different from others in the Bible who died and were raised? You know, this is a really good question because Jesus' death and resurrection are unique. We see in the Bible several different places throughout the Old Testament and in the New Testament where people are raised from the dead. Um, Jesus is uh, an example of one who raises other people from the dead and they're in the New Testament mm -hmm. and uh, several accounts. Lazarus being like yeah, the main Lazarus one. is the yeah. prime example yeah. of that. Everybody, I mean, we're all familiar with this. But there's something that's different about all those different accounts of people being raised uh, from the dead. Everywhere else except for Jesus. Because if you think about it this way, all those other people, they lived out their life and then they died. And what makes that unique is, think about it this way, all those other people, well, they were all sinners by nature. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the one exception. So Without true. having so any true. sin in His life, Jesus lived the perfect life that we couldn't live. So when Jesus died, it wasn't a death that He deserved to die, like, you know, Al... That's were, right, yeah, yeah, like any of the others yeah. who died. That's exactly right. You know, the wages of sin is death. Well, well He wasn't paying a wage for Himself. No... Mm -hmm. Jesus was paying a wage for each one of us. So His death is unique. His resurrection is unique in that way. And, and, it's, and it's more than that because if you think about it, even uh, as the uh, people in the Old Testament, the prophets, as they would uh, speak life and God would supernaturally br bring them back to life, mm -hmm. and as Jesus would speak life into other people, there's no one speaking life into Jesus except for God alone. And that mm -hmm. glory uh, that just happens there. And He doesn't do it for their physical body to be raised in that one moment in time. He does it for eternity. He does mm -hmm. it. This is an eternal thing that Jesus is doing here. And so that's what makes it unique in, mm -hmm. in that way. That's so good. And I love the way that you articulated that, that it's Jesus... And it was the glory of God that raised Jesus, which again, right. going back to the question that was asked of me, that renders sin powerless. That's exactly right. Um, That's exactly so right. good. So now we're going to move, uh, moving along, we're going to look at verses, where are we at, Charles? 10 and 11. 10 and 11, 10 and 11. I can't find my place here, guys. 10 and 11, we're going to look at verses 10 and 11. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. 
So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. All right, so what does it mean for us to consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus? Well, one, we have to understand, um, as verse uh, 10 puts it, for, de- for the death He died, being Jesus Christ, He died once for all time. Or he died to sin once for all time. Because Jesus, in His death and in His resurrection, as we were talking about earlier, that rendered sin powerless. So, as Jesus' death was a death to sin because he, lived, because he lived a holy life, we too, having put ourselves with Jesus Christ, having seen ourselves and believed that Jesus died for our sins, we put ourselves in that, and so now we have died to sin. And since we are united to Christ in His death, we are also united, as this verse, as uh, verse um, ten also says. But for the death he died, he died. He died to sin once for all time. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So because we are united with Christ in His death, we also are united with Him in His life. And if we're united with Him in His life, then we too live a life to God. But we do it through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. We do it in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ. And so. What it means for us to be dead to sin and alive to Christ is not that we will never sin, but that we are dead to sin and it's slavery over us. Mm -hmm. It no longer has a hold on us, but we are now alive in Jesus Christ. We now have freedom from sin. We now can, can go confess our sin to God and be freed, be graciously given freedom of it. And so that's what it means when it says dead to sin and alive to Christ. It's dead in Christ Jesus. Now through Christ Jesus, we are alive yeah. like we are supposed to live. Yeah, like he's trying to help us to understand mm. that our default has changed. Where at one time our default was that we were going to give in to sin. And now that doesn't have to be the case. That's right. That we've been given freedom in Christ that we didn't have before. That's and right. I, and yeah, that's what it means to be alive. That's, that's great. That's great. Well, uh, let's continue on. We're going to continue to the next section uh, titled Tools of Righteousness. And this goes yeah. through verses 12 and 14. And we're going to look at specifically right now at verses 12 and 13. And so I would encourage you again to follow along with, with, with us. Verse 12 says... Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its desires. And do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons of unrighteousness, but as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God and all the parts of yourself to God as weapons for righteousness. Mm. Kevin, powerful section of Scripture right here. What does it mean to offer any parts of or any parts of what does it mean not to offer any parts of our body to sin even after salvation I'm not perfect and I'm prone to sin mm-hmm. we're not perfect we're prone so, to sin so what does it mean not what does it mean not to offer any parts yeah. of our body to sin Yeah yeah that's it's a mouthful if you think about it That's right it? yeah but uh and sometimes that can be a little bit confusing maybe when you're reading through this and you, and you have to think back on it. But really, if you just kind of boil it down to think of it this way, uh, we're so tempted in our own self to, to kind of compartmentalize things. We're, we're tempted to, to put God in a box over here and then over here is this other part of our life and then over here is another section. And what he's saying is that can't be with us as Christians. Uh, God doesn't want just a part of our life. He wants the all of our life. And so we can't give just, we can't like, well, this is our God part of our life, and then this is our not God part of our life. God wants it all. We can't give part of our life over to sin anymore. We're we're changed. We're made different. And that's what Mm. Paul is really, he's trying to hit home on here for us to, to see how this transformation that takes place in us as we're, we're new creatures in Christ, as you, you can see here. I think that's what he's, what he's that's hitting right. on. That ties back to that first question that was asked, you know, why does Paul make such a big deal of sin? Well, it's because we can't live a double life. That's right. We can't live in sin and in life in Christ. 
That's exactly because we've right. been freed from sin by what Christ has done. So that's yeah, exactly I mean that's, right. that's we have to live wholly committed to Jesus Christ. That's exactly right. And now in verse fourteen. For sin will, no, will not rule over you, because you are not under the law, but under grace. So, how do I operate under grace rather than under the law? That's a million dollar question, really. How do we operate under the grace of Jesus Christ rather than under the law of sin and death, really, is the, is the question here. <clears throat> and so... Okay. Um, the way that we do that, as this verse says, for sin, for sin will not rule over you because you are not under the law, but under grace. We have to realize that we have to live life graciously. So in, in the same sense as my, you know, when my daughter or my son come up, they, they've done something, they have frustrated me, they, they've sinned in some way, I have to enact graciously, one, because they're little children, but also I just have to live life with a grace because grace has been given so wholly to me. If I were to come down on them hard and punish them in a strict manner, they, I wouldn't be giving them grace. I wouldn't be loving them uh, in that way. And we've been called to be gracious kind of people. We've, call, we've been called to give graciously because we have been given so much grace. So we're no longer bound by the law mm -hmm. of sin and death, but we're bound by grace, which is life and life abundantly. And so that's really what we're, what yeah. we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're hitting it uh, right on the head. Is the, the fact that uh, all of the law points mm -hmm. to our sinfulness. It, it shows us that we're sinful. And without God's grace, we would all be lost. And so as we've been shown grace, we must right. then show grace. And that's what mm -hmm. it means to live out the grace. I love that. And so we want to leave you guys with a, a couple of questions here as we're thinking through this scripture. Uh, the first one is, how will considering ourselves dead to sin and alive in Christ affect our daily lives? So how is that going to affect your daily life as you think about this? We're dead to sin. Or alive to Christ, how does that change who I am? And then the second question is, in what particular way can we offer our bodies as weapons in a fight for righteousness? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good question. And, it, and these questions will be unique probably to you uh, mm -hmm. as you answer these questions. There will be some overlap that each one of us will have. But, That's right. But God's going to open up something for you in, in these answers. Yeah, we don't have the answers for these specific questions for you, but we want really for you to wrestle through this passage like we've been wrestling through, uh, like we've been talking through today, because these questions have to be answered by you and you individually. Um, so we encourage you, Sorry. take the time, take the time in prayer. We are going to be praying for you. We're, we love you guys. We're looking forward to that time when we are back together with you. Um, and we also want to make sure to mention to you, so we, we're putting out these videos, but this is actually the last time that Kevin and I will be together because uh, the, of the new um, shelter-in-place uh, order that was handed down by the governor. And so this will be the last time that Kevin and I will be together. Kevin's going to be doing uh, children's yep. uh, Bible studies with Tommy. Uh, I'm going to be doing the adult Bible study moving forward. Uh, Robbie's got the sermons, obviously. And so that's kind of how this is going to be going. We want to make sure, though, that you know to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, RCBC Media, um, which is going to be right here. And also look down here because that's where our other videos that we're posting, whether sermons, children's ministry, adult uh, Bible studies are going to be. We just want to make sure that you are well informed and know what's going to be here. And we are looking forward to seeing you again soon in the future. We love you guys. We're praying for you. And we'll see you later.